You have another testifier representative? You know, I just, I'm just reading from the list. Oh, so, well, I mean, you, I have you started enough. introducing them, so you can continue if you want. Oh, sure, no, I'll, absolutely. <laughs> uh, thanks, Madam Chair. Uh, Marin uh, Schroeder is the next person on the list. Can we call the next testifier down as well, please? Representative Edelson. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Can we call the next testifier, Donna? Oh, Elton? yes, absolutely. Um, Joan Barron would be the next person if you want to come. And then Aaron Chase, if you want to come sit behind here, too, that would be great. Please state your name again for the record and proceed with your testimony. My name is Marin Schroeder, and I'm president of Sunspell, Minnesota. Um, as I mentioned before, we're a 501c3 that has been working with medical cannabis patients since implementation of um, our current program. We've worked one-on-one -on -one with over 500 patients during that time, and we have a patient group with over 700 members. Uh, we have spent the last couple of years expanding access to medical cannabis in Minnesota uh, with pe successful petitions for the inclusion of post-traumatic stress disorder, autism spectrum disorder, and now Alzheimer's disease. Over the past four years, we've had the opportunity to talk with thousands of patients, both registered and not. Many of those patients have had success, and I want to be clear that we don't think the two existing manufacturers are doing a bad job. Um, I'm going to clarify the rest of what I have to say with that. Um, but what we need to see is more attention to patients and patient access than the, than the needs of the industry itself. Minnesota's patient numbers are a fraction of where they should be. As of Friday, February 28th, there were 15,331 patients currently enrolled and over 7,000 patients who were at one time registered but either dropped their enrollment, likely due to high costs, or they passed away. According to the January 2019 Medical P Cannabis Program update published by the Office of Medical Cannabis, consistently from July to December of 2018, fewer than 11,000 of those 15,000 patients purchased from a state registered manufacturer. Um, to compare our patient numbers, um, New York and Pennsylvania both uh, worked from Minnesota's model and improved it. They both implemented after us. Um, they both have around 100,000 patients each. Were we to adjust that for the population, that is over 40,000 patients under New York's model and over 70,000 patients under Pennsylvania's. The patients aren't registering because they know the medicine is cost prohibitive. We appreciate the intent of this bill, which will improve geographic accessibility and might begin to scratch the surface of affordability, but it doesn't go far enough. We don't see how this cost will substantially bring down costs to levels in, remotely in line with other medical cannabis states like Arizona and Illinois, or even recreational states like Washington and Oregon. Minnesota's prices are substantially higher than other markets, as demonstrated by the prices associated with a high quality 500 milliliter or milligram cartridge. Um, I provided the committee a handout showing the price of comparable products in Illinois, Arizona, Washington, and Oregon that ranged from six to nine cents per milligram. In Minnesota, a cartridge from Leafline Labs cost $73, which is 18 cents per milligram. Minnesota Medical Solutions sells their cartridges with only 250 milligrams of THC for $59 or 24 cents per milligram. Both companies do offer discounts, that's great, but when the, when the base price is four to six times, the, the discounts can't, can't do enough. <coughs> Patients in other states have access to more than two companies and they're allowed to consume raw cannabis material, which is the most cost-effective way to get medicine to our patients and supplements the cost of producing more expensive medical cannabis products. Unfortunately, we fail to see how this bill meaningfully addresses the grossly ob obscene cost issue. Um, the bill also fails to address a number of major barriers to accessibility, including a conflict in the current law that prohibits a patient from being a caregiver and a caregiver from being a patient. Um, I see Nels nodding at me because I've talked to him ab about that before. Uh, patients on probation and conditional release may not be able to use medical cannabis based on the county judge, probation officer that they see. Um, and patients who are on parole with the Department of Corrections cannot use at all. They will be sent to prison. We know two patients that have, at least two patients have been. Employers are still firing patients for using medical cannabis as permitted by the program, despite protection from discrimination, because that protection has no legal teeth. There's no clause for attorney's fees or back pay. 
We still arbitrarily include qualifiers for cancer patients and those with terminal illness. Isn't cancer enough of a diagnosis to get access to medical cannabis? And we're not effectively using medical cannabis as a tool to reduce opioid use until we add chronic pain and, and let anybody that is using opiates use medical cannabis. Um, our team has met with Representative Edelson and we understand she's busy. What was frustrating to us was last week I was actually directed to an industry lobbyist um, leading up to this hearing and I think that was a big missed opportunity to make meaningful improvements on behalf of the patients. Um, so it's my hope she'll work with us to make some of these other amendments um, to improve access for the tens of thousands of patients currently left behind. Um, we would like to see immediate substantial amendments to this bill. This, this is an urgent issue, guys. Uh, we need to address the accessibility issues previously outlined, remove excessive and costly requirements for manufacturer operation, amend the definition of medical cannabis to permit raw cannabis material, open up the market to additional producers and remove the vertical integration mandate to allow for more in organic in industry growth and expand the number of patients eligible by adding chronic pain in any condition for which an opioid could otherwise be prescribed. Um, as an aside, um, I, there was talk about the appropriation to the Office of Medical Cannabis and we were mentioned we are currently handling an average of five to ten calls per day um, from patients referred from or that cannot get the information they need through the Office of Medical Cannabis. Their primary inquiry is how to find a so, as how to find a certifying provider, how to talk to their doctor about enrolling them in the program. Um, OMC cannot share provider information with patients, but we have been able to compile an unofficial list as an outside entity. Um, so our volunteers are currently running themselves ragged and we would ask that during the process, the committees consider providing an appropriation for OMC to issue grants to organizations like ours who are picking up the slack for, for the state of Minnesota right now. Um, we encourage you all to work on substantial amendments to this bill to meaningful, meaningfully address the accessibility, affordability, patient protections, and justice. Our patients deserve it and should come before the industry and trust. Thank you for your time today, and I'm happy to take questions. Thank you for your testimony.